Yeah, I'm coming back with part two, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Again, men built the buildings you're living and working in. And check this out, <clears throat> ladies that think you know so much. When you go to your job and you have a white male boss, do you talk to that boss like you talk to your husband or the man you're dating, trusting God to cause it to go into a marriage? Think about it. You don't gaslight your boss. You may talk about him behind his back or out of his presence. You don't do it in front of that white boss. So when you learn to talk to your husband, <clears throat> the way you talk to your white boss on that job, there is no problem. There is no problem. That's being submissive unto God through the man. I gave you examples about wives that disobeyed their, their God by cutting up their husbands with the tongue. First of all, complaining, <clears throat> excuse me, is a sin. Murmuring and complaining is a sin. Look at Israel in the Old Testament. <clears throat> Why? Because it's unbelief. It's doubt. It's fear. And in 1 Peter 3 and 6, it says, If you do well, ladies, and you're not walking in fear, if you do well, if you obey God, you won't walk in fear. Why? The scripture says, God's perfect love destroys fear. So he's perfecting love in us all, but especially <clears throat> you ladies. Especially those that are saved, married, filled with the Holy Ghost. And do you know why this message is coming forth? Because I'm going to give you another example of a great man of God who died because he started teaching opposite of what I'm teaching right now. A lot of you know Miles Monroe. I'll repeat it. Miles Monroe, him and his wife died in a plane car, plane crash years ago. Miles Monroe started out <clears throat> balanced in the gospel. But then he started teaching about, oh, the husband is the floor. He's the foundation and blah, blah, blah. When the scriptures say, Christ is the rock. Matthew 7, those that obey God build their house on the rock or concepts of God's order in his word are like a house built on a rock. When the storms come and beat against it, it won't fall or be destroyed. But if that house is built on sand and the storms of life come, that house, that marriage, that business will be destroyed. Matthew 7, look it up. So Miles Monroe started teaching this negative narrative. Oh, if anything goes wrong in the marriage, it's all the man's fault. That's not scripture. I often give the example of the married couple that goes into the store. The wife knows the husband's got $500 in his pocket. They plan on going in there, buying stuff, not spending over $500. She knows he's got the money in his pocket. They're together. Then he goes to the sports section. She goes somewhere else and decides to steal items and put them down her pants and in her purse. He's checking the stuff out, pays for the stuff that they picked up otherwise. She goes through the detector and the alarm goes off that she's got items that are stolen. Who told her to take those items? Not the husband. She knew the man had the money. <clears throat> it was a matter of her personal choice. Eve chose to disobey God. You choose to open your mouth against your husband. Nobody's forcing you. A demon's influencing you. But the scripture says in the book of James, you Bible thumpers and so-called ministers of the gospel, women, 
Ha! <laughs> Whoa! It says, submit unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. You need to underline that word submit. Single or wed, especially if you're saved, you need to take a piece of paper, take a marker, put submit unto God and paste it on your refrigerator to remind yourself, don't submit to the devil, submit unto God by being submissive to the order or authority God has set up. Policemen have authority to direct traffic when there's an accident or the light went out. They are directing traffic. They are authorized by the city, and if it's a state trooper, by the state government to use their authority. When a wife despises her husband's authority, she's in fear, doubt, unbelief, and disobedience. Now, a wise husband will pray because a lot of times trying to explain everything to the wife may confuse her more. He prays. He doesn't badger. He doesn't gaslight. He prays or give her scripture and say, sweetie, here you go. Point her back to God because Paul also said, work out your own soul salvation. So it's the wife's responsibility to get before God, to get delivered and get those childhood issues destroyed, get that negative thinking destroyed. Now, if I were telling you to come to me, you can say I'm teaching false doctrine. But see, I have prophetic insight given by God to let God's people know which direction to go. And God is saying, Ladies, come to him. Listen to the message, but in your personal time, come to God. Come to God. Repent before God and get your act together because I'm going to repeat the statistics. The divorce rate for Asians in this country is 12.1. The divorce rate for whites is 15.1. The divorce rate for Latinos is 18.3. Now, the black culture, it's 30.6. That's triple, almost triple the Asians. It's double the whites, and it's almost double of the Latinos. And if you go back to scripture, that Eve was first deceived, then Adam, and I gave the example, have you ever seen a man date rape by a woman? I've never heard about it. Maybe you have. I haven't. But why? God bless you, Sister Iris and Sister Dorothy and Brother uh, Bowden. But why are women date raped by men? Because they are easily deceived and it's not gaslighting. You Listen, <clears throat> if you're not aware of your weakness, you don't know where to watch out for the devil for. A man, I, I, I'll give an example myself, a man, a real man, not a faggot, a man. He's got three major weaknesses he has to always be aware of. One is pride, rebelling against God. The other one is women because sexual fulfillment is one of his greatest needs that God put in him. So he has to be, he has to be careful how he deals with women that are not his wife. And if he's single, he got to be double careful because one conversation can cause that man to get into sin. He's got to be careful. The other one is greed. He has to be careful that he doesn't go after money by any means. It has to be in God's order. So those are the three weaknesses a man, including myself, have to be careful. I mean, there are, you can be uh, saved 100 years, married 2,000 years, I'm exaggerating, but I'm making a point. And a man can look at a woman and be like, whoa, I hear the Commodores. She's a brick house. But he got to watch where his mind goes. He got to watch if he says anything. Sometimes it's best to shut up. Don't say nothing. Look the other way and keep going. That's what Joseph did in the Old Testament. When Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph, do you understand? Let me take my time here. <clears throat> do you understand in the Old Testament 
when Potiphar's wife tried to get Joseph to get on top of her and spank her? Do you understand why Joseph ran? He didn't walk. He ran. Evidently, that woman was causing something to happen on his body. Hello, we grown. His soldiers stood up. But Joseph said, whoa, whoa, I, I, I got to serve God. Let me run. He ran. He knew his weakness. He ran. And on that note, single ladies that believe God for husbands, save or unsaved, marry wise especially, <clears throat> saved especially, <clears throat> your mouth, your negative words can help influence that man to go outside his marriage and start dealing with a woman who does not badger him with her words. It's more than cooking and cleaning. You got to watch your attitude. Women are very influential. You're more emotional. God bless you, Brother Kanye. Smile out the way, brother. God bless you. Glad you're listening. When girls are born, their verbal vocabulary in their brain functions faster in the area of speaking words sooner than boys. That's a scientific fact. Boys will make more sounds at a young age. Zoom, bang, bang, boom, wham. Girls form words first and they speak more words. They're more verbal. <clears throat> Men can talk about sports for the most part. But by nature, the way God created it, women speak more words than men. So that's why the devil came to Eve and said, Eve, is that really the way God said it? God wants you to be better than, he don't want you to be better than him. And she listened to that garbage. Notice what the devil used. He used words. The same thing Eve and women are used to hearing are words. Words are containers. They empower or they can destroy. Proverbs 18, life and death are in the power of the tongue. In words, Psalms 32, round about that seventh verse says, God will surround me with songs of deliverance, sounds, words, insight, narratives, inspiration, concepts, scientific proven theories that set the captive free. The first thing the Messiah said in Luke chapter four, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to minister to the poor. And he talked about deliverance, setting people free. He talked, he spoke on one occasion. The young man said, you don't even have to come to my house, but just speak the word. And I know my servant will be healed. God bless you, brother Conyers. Now out the way, brother. He's, the, the man said, just speak the word. Ladies, your words, if you understand the power of words, you will go in your character, your personal character, 10 feet tall. First Peter 3 and 6, the women of old admonished their husband's position given by God, provision by a man, I'm going to say it slow, is not just finances. We've been told that by society. We've been taught or programmed that by ignorant, dumb, white and black and even Hispanic teachers and preachers. The first provision a godly man is supposed to provide for his family is to help the family understand God's order of doing things. Seek ye first the kingdom. A kingdom has order. It has rules. 
when you first start your job, ladies, you don't get a paycheck the first day. You learn about the company culture. You learn about the policies of the company, their structure, this order. So why in the heck when you get married to a born again brother, do you expect all this money? Ah, you ain't get the money. Ah, shut up and repent of your fear, doubt, and unbelief against God. Stop taking it out on your husband. It's your personal problem. You're doubting God. You're not walking in faith. First Peter 3 and 6 again, it says, you do well. If you do well, there will be no fear. There will be no confusion. If there's confusion, if there's fear, how are we going to make it? The man lost his job, got laid off, whatever. What are we going to do? Seek God. He has the answer. Encourage your husband. Uh, well, you, you, you ain't get a job yet. Oh my God. What's going to happen? Ah, shut up. Do a Daffy Duck. Quiet. Get before God. Ask the Holy Ghost for strength for yourself and pray for your husband's profession, especially if you speak in tongues. Pray in tongues for your man. Build him up. Fix his favorite meal. Have his slippers ready if he likes to read the paper. Have it ready. Learn how to serve. Learn how to serve. It ain't all about you trying to make yourself a goddess in the marriage, which is idolatry, which God hates. Oh, the woman is so soft. What about the man's sensitivity? There are a lot of brothers right now I want to encourage that are single, save and unsaved. Married, save and unsafe, that have been badgered for years by the words of your wife. Father, I thank you for healing their hearts and their minds right now. Destroying all of those demonic strongholds of the mind. Save and unsave. God loves everybody. He don't like sin. There's some brothers out there who are not born again that are still hurting. I told you about the guy Victor when I was unsaved, working at Pratt Whitney. Went to that after hour on Hudson Street, right off golf, little greenhouse. We in there, you know, drinking and yada, yada, yada. And he introduced me to his wife. Her name was uh, E, Edie. Beautiful woman, brick house. But when that sister opened her mouth, it was like a razor that cut Victor right in front of me. And Victor went like this. He was in pain. No wife has a right to cause pain in a man at all. No wife. Because you know why? The devil is the one that comes to rob, kill, and destroy. So if you're married or dating a woman who is judgmental, always critical, all she can see is your faults, if you are dating a young lady like that, I don't care if you white, black, brother, blue, or green, drop her like a hot potato. She is a easy tool for the devil to use her mouth to try to destroy your purpose. And as a matter of fact, a lot of you single brothers need to be chasing your purpose and not some legs and thighs. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but chase your purpose. You will find God in your purpose. You won't be distracted by, oh, we supposed to go out to dinner and all these women, you know, then they want all of this, this, that, and the other, and this, that, and the other, and don't even have the money to pay for it themselves. Who told you you're entitled? Ladies, are you obeying God part two? Who told you you're entitled to so much? The devil told you a lie and you believed it. Again, go back to the job. When you first start a job, unless you're prostituting, you don't get paid right away. You got to learn everything about that company. You got to do your job correctly within those 90 days probation period or else you ain't going to be there long. It's a process. God is in 
all positive order. So the divorce rate in the black culture is 30.6. That's not all on the man. A lot of it is on the women. And preachers have lied. I told you about Miles Monroe. <clears throat> he didn't teach this. He taught that the fault of any marriage is on the man. Because the man is the floor. And you step on the floor. The Bible says the body of Christ is built on the foundation of of the great apostle, the Messiah. He's the foundation. Upon this rock, I will build my body, my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The Messiah didn't say, upon this husband, I'm going to build my rock. Stop believing lies. Get in the word. Learn the word. Learn the word. Ladies, are you obeying God? <clears throat> When's the last time you encouraged your husband? When's the last time you said, honey, what can I do for you? It's always about me. We've been taught in this culture. Open the door for the woman. That's cool. Give her flowers. That's cool. Give her a card. But have you ever, when's the last time you gave your husband a card of appreciation? A hug of appreciation. A kiss of appreciation. A candy shop session when he don't, oh, I'm going to hit that. When he don't ask for it. I talked to a sister <clears throat> a while back. She said concerning the BJ situation, you know, trumpet, we grown. That's something a man shouldn't even have to ask for. Uh-oh. Now, for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> ladies, the five basic needs of a man that God put in him, that God put in him, are these. Number one, respect. That's First Peter 3 and 6 all day. Number two, sexual fulfillment. Notice I said number one is respect. Number two is sexual fulfillment. Number three is moral support. Words of encouragement. Next one, keeping yourself well-groomed and healthy. And number five, recreational companionship walking with him, going bowling and things of that nature. So you have respect, sexual fulfillment, moral support, keeping yourself well-groomed and healthy, and recreation companionship. Now, some women don't even know their first five, their basic five needs. It's love, affection, honesty and openness, communication, godly and family commitment, financial security. I said that last because financial security just does not mean a nine to five job like we've been taught. That's the lowest way to get money. The next step is management, still in the poverty line. The two highest ways to create finances and economics to multiply are creativity, your imagination, and communication together. Songwriters, consultants business owners, thinkers. Remember I said men are more logical. Thinkers, having a plan. Money follows wisdom. The Messiah said, what king is going to decide to go to war and doesn't first sit down and make a plan? So if your man is a planner, there's your wealth. Your wealth is in the wisdom. The money's only a fruit. From the wisdom, a tree, apple tree, plant a seed. It comes up. The fruit comes off the seed. The planting is the seed. If there's no planting, you're not going to get long-term generational wealth. So after you pay all your bills, what are you going to leave to your children and grandchildren? Or what other income is coming in? Are you buying into a franchise? I'm going to name diversified portfolio portfolio. Quickly, before I run out of time, diversify investment portfolio. Number one, businesses. Number two, real estate, residential and commercial. Number three, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, rhodium. Number four is equity. Number five is annuities. And number six is Forex, foreign currency exchange. Is your man talking like that? Or ladies are you talking like that? Or is it just, we want the, I want the ladies Michael Kors. 
making him rich, dummy. Where's your plan? Everything I just named, and there are some other things, brings value. It goes up in value. It's imagination and creativity. Just And you know what? Bible thumpers, that's an example of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. They were business owners. They had land, real estate. Look in Genesis chapter 2, verse 12. God talks about gold, bendulum, which is what they make perfume off of. That's a business. Rare stones, the onyx stones, high-end gems. That's a business. Jewelry stores is a business. He talked about business before he mentioned the prophecy of the Messiah, Genesis 3.15 salvation. God focused on planning, strategic generational wealth planning before he talked about salvation and the Bible. You read and I read. Oh yeah. It's this type of wisdom that will take a nation, a family above the nine to five. It takes time. The hand of the diligent shall rule, not the impatient and fearful and doubtful. So God bless you. If you need help, call on God. My uh, email is mike8828 at yahoo.com. I don't ask for money because I'm not being funny. Whatever you <laughs> It takes a different type of a person and different type of caliber to push where God's sending me. I, and I'm not bragging. I just named some stuff some of you've never heard about. That, that, that's, 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 that's where I focus. But I also focus what God tells me to focus. That's to help my brothers and sisters to do better in God's eyesight. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.